Okay, welcome. <laughs> My name is Jill, and uh, so happy you've dropped into this True North Insight recording, and to the folks that are here in person. Um, it feels like in person now. I'm so used to Zoom. <laughs> uh, feels like you're here in person. It's really lovely to see faces and to kind of feel a sense of relationship and community with people. Um, yeah. Hmm. So I was uh, inspired uh, for tonight's talk and practice by something one of my dear cousins said. Uh, they're in a time of an exciting transition and have recently um, purchased um, a, like a mobile home, like a, an RV. Um, or, yeah. And... Um, are are beginning getting just in this transition time of getting ready to live in there and travel around and um, and they they took this uh because it's the kind you can you drive in it's not like you separated and drive your vehicle away uh so they to go grocery shopping they take their whole home with them to the grocery store and then when they were coming home, it was kind of their first time going to the grocery store with their new home. And they, uh, on the drive home, he said this to me, he had this realization, oh, I don't have to hurry. I'm already home. Like there was this sense of he'd gotten the groceries and then the sense of get the groceries home to put them in the fridge or the freezer or, you know, put stuff away. And it was like, oh, you don't have to hurry when you're already home. And that just, when he said that, it just landed in my body. Like, you don't have to hurry when you're already home. Was I've just felt my whole body sigh and relax. Like, oh. I'm already home. <laughs> this is this is the recreational vehicle. This is the mobile home. This is the we're always home and how easy and how quickly and how frequently we forget that. And Many of us have um, also have difficulty with that because of trauma, that this there can be an, an alienation of not feeling at home in the body. So I want to acknowledge that as well. And yet, this is how we're experiencing the world, is through this heart, body, mind, these sense doors. And the, there's lots of different ways to, you know, for all of us, we all need healing in our relationship with this home, in my opinion, uh, to different degrees. But uh, yeah, the, the, this sense of like, it's it feels kind of radical to me to like really walk around and move through every moment of a day like I'm home, I'm already home, instead of like, I can't wait to get home. <laughs> or, or maybe some people feel like I want, I can't wait to get out of home if it's like an unsafe home. And, uh, or, or a feeling of like, I really want a place to call home to call my own. And it's like, yes, and you know, there is that need It's one of the prerequisites for meditation actually is is a sense of safety security um which which might come in the form of home but also what does it feel like to know that within ourselves to move through our days with that sense of ah i don't have to hurry it's all i'm all right here right now um and and so much of mm, the habit of our days and our culture are 
pulling our awareness out of the body into all the things we want to get and where we want, where else we want to be, who else we want to be, constant. Um, to to work with this, like I I just felt very relaxed and slowed down, even though I was probably moving at the same pace, but internally slowed down, like ah, already home, and just kind of using that like a little mantra through the day, little reminder. Um, and it, uh, it's also similar to kind of being in a mobile home or a RV, that the scenery of our life is constantly moving through, you know, like if you were on a road trip, that even if you're sitting or standing still, this life experience is constantly flowing through, flowing by, constantly changing. All the sounds, all the thoughts, emotions, the likes and the dislikes, all the physical sensations. Just as if, you know, and a large part of many of our days is actually moving moving here, there, here, there. But even if you weren't, even if you're constantly stationary or for a, a period of time stationary, everything is still flowing by just like the scenery, you know? And hmm, there's something really that could be peaceful in that relationship of just not trying to grab any part of the road any part of the any of, of the what's passing through not trying to hold on to what we want or get rid of the parts of the journey that we don't like but just oh it's like this right now constantly changing flowing uh, there's a poem i've read before in other talks but i think it's been a little while um that it used to be titled How to Live with My Body is by Joe Rodell. John, pardon me, John, John Rodell. Um, he subsequently changed the title, which is also a beautiful title called The Anatomy of Peace. Um, but it, it was formally titled How to Live with My Body. He updated it in August of 2021. Um, and it, it just really speaks to this kind of disconnect that can happen, this kind of a separating ourselves from this sense of home. And uh, yeah, so I will read that. <clears throat> to my, uh, it's, a, it's a, not a short poem, but it's uh, brilliant. So you might like to rest back and just... Uh, let yourself travel through the journey with the this uh, very evocative poem. My brain and heart divorced a decade ago over who was to blame about how big of a mess I have become. Eventually, they couldn't be in the same room with each other. Now my head and my heart share custody of me. I stay with my brain during the week and my heart gets me on weekends. They never speak to one another. Instead, they give me the same note to pass to each other every week. And their notes they send to one another always say the same thing. This is all your fault. And on Wednesdays, my head lists all the times my heart has screwed things up for me in the future. They blame each other for the state of my life. There's been a lot of yelling and a crying. 
So lately, I've been spending a lot of time with my gut, who serves as my unofficial therapist. Most nights, I sneak out of the window of my ribcage and slide down my spine and collapse on the gut's plush leather chair that's always open for me. And I just sit, 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 until the sun comes up. Last evening, my gut asked me if I was having a hard time being caught. Whoops, I'm missing a line. Between something that happened yesterday, well, my head is always worried about something that may happen tomorrow. I lamented, my gut squeezed my hand. I just can't live with my mistakes of the past or my anxiety about the future, I sighed. My gut smiled and said, in that case, you should go stay with your lungs for a while. I was confused. The look on my face gave it away. If you're exhausted about your heart's obsession with the fixed past and your mind's focus on the uncertain future, your lungs are the perfect place for you. There is no yesterday in your lungs. There is no tomorrow there either. And while my heart was staring at old photographs, I packed a little bag and walked to the door of my lungs. Before I could even knock, she opened the door with a smile. And as a gust of air embraced me, she said, what took you so long? Such a beautiful invitation and reminder of this feeling of home. And it feels like that, like, oh, what took you so long to remember me, to come home, to rest right here, right now, as we move through this journey? And uh, I apologize for the reading. I think there were some lines missing in this printing of it. So, but I will put the link to John's page on uh, down below this recording, um, just to make sure that the right one is conveyed there. Um, yes, and and so as you may know, the Buddha also taught this, that the first foundation, the ground of mindfulness is the body. And there's uh, many aspects and practices and um, ways in to coming home to the body. Because we may have noticed that as this poem so beautifully conveys, <laughs> The mind is often elsewhere. All, often when we pay attention to mm, the habits of mind, it's very, very often in the past or the future or embellish, embellishing the present. But there's usually very often, certainly in this mind, the habit of future planning, list making, worrying, or going over things that have already happened, going over them again and again and again, revising as we go. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you've noticed that at times. And uh, the body so mind is very often in past or future, and the body is always only right here in the present. Always only right here in the present. So this is another reminder that to come home, to be right here in this mobile home as we journey through this life. 
Um, and many, all of the important insights of meditation can be known through this type of presence. We can see when we really rest and let everything be flowing through, oh, everything is impermanent, absolutely everything. Most things are way beyond my control. I still don't like to admit that, but it's true. <laughs> we keep trying. That, uh, you know, it's all just conditioned arisings and passings. The sounds that are coming and going, most of them are not being made by me uh, in any given moment. Um, the sensations that are coming and going in the body. I mean, if we had control of all the sensations we feel, that would be wondrous, but it's certainly not the case. Um, even all the thoughts, to some degree, we can begin with a, with a meditation practice to calm and quiet and watch thoughts arising without them carrying us away into past and future. This takes a fair bit of practice and a fair bit of calming and quieting. Um, and it depends on the conditions of how we're living, where we're living, how much activity has been in the day, how much practice there's been, um, how much experience we have, etc. So to some degree, we can have an effect on how much the mind pulls us um, out of present moment, but <clears throat> when we really slow down and pay attention to the mind, we notice also the thoughts are coming and going. It, uh, they're, um, we're not usually deciding what we're going to think. <laughs> it's like, oh, where did that come from? Or um, or we can maybe see where it originated from. You know, one, it, there was maybe a sound that then brought stories or aversion or liking, wanting, or a sight or one of the other sense doors. Um, yeah. So let's take this, uh, let's take this vehicle out for a test run by sitting still and practicing meditation and cultivating this relationship. And um, I'll be referring a little bit to just in the guided meditation to uh, something, a practice called the Anapanasati Sutta, which means in breath, out breath, remembering. So we'll be using the breath as an anchor, one of the anchors. For some people, using the breath as an anchor for our mindfulness mm, can create more tension or can feel uh, like mm, the breath gets too controlled or uncomfortable. And so I'll also offer that we can just open, we'll start with the sensations of the body and you can stay with that or you can um, gather in on the breath, with the breath, if you choose. Okay. I think that's it. Yes. All right. So uh, adjust your posture. And if you like to dim your lights or turn away from the screen. <clears throat> Uh, there's four postures in meditation, so if you would like to lay down, you could. These are practices of awakening, so if you're laying down, you might like to lift up your forearm so that it will fall if you're falling asleep. Or some people bend their knees so that their knees kind of fall as they're falling asleep, and then we can just begin again. So it's fine to lay down if your body needs that support. 
Another posture is standing. Walking is a third and seated meditation is a fourth. So just take a drink. Mm. You don't have to hurry when you're already home. See how that feels in the body. Already home. What's it like just in this arriving moment to feel that there's nowhere else to be? We're here right now. Inviting, softening, and landing, occupying, embodying. Feel how the body in this moment is directly knowing the touch points of what your body is resting on, supported by. Letting yourself really land and settle in. And then we'll just open to all the sensations that are coming and going. You might feel pressure in some place of the body. The touch of air in other places. Sensations of coolness or warmth or heat. Sensations of tingling or tickles, itches.
sensations of moisture or dryness, eyes and mouth. Sensations of hardness and softness, bones, flesh. Sensations of movement. And then just rest in this kind of open field of awareness, just knowing body, occupying the body, and feeling all these sensations are just arising and passing. You don't need to feel everything all at once or anything in particular. Different sensations kind of float up to the surface of attention or stand out and then they'll pass away. At some point, something else will come into focus, and then it will subside. Let's just check out these arising and passing field of sensations in these next few minutes of silence. And then you can choose to just continue resting with the sensations of the body in this home. If you feel it would be supportive to help uh, gather and calm the attention, you might like to begin attending to the breath sensation in particular.
See where you feel the sensation of breath most excessively. In the belly, the chest, or at the nostrils. And with this relaxed, spacious attention, just lightly aware if the breath is long on the inhale or short, is the exhale long or short. Nothing is right or wrong here, just noticing how each breath is arising and passing, passing through, and each one is unique. If you're not using the breath as an anchor, just noticing how the quality of whatever sensation is arising or passing. Does it feel like it's short or longer? Is it sudden or sharp? And from this gentle, spacious attention, we begin to become sensitive to the whole body as we breathe in and out. Still a gentle resting with breath or sensation, as if that breath is suffusing the whole body. You don't need to push or pull the breath. The whole body is breathing itself. Feeling some sensitivity of breath in the head, the torso, even arms and legs. As the whole body becomes sensitive to sensation and breath, noticing calm, allowing the experience of calm here in this home, Calming the whole body I breathe in, calming the whole body I breathe out.
And then begin to turn towards and notice quality that we call rapture. As if you're in your mobile home on a journey and your attention is wrapped with the scenery right here in this home. Calm, sensitive, wrapped attention with this living, moving experience. And noticing any quality of pleasure that arrives with this. Any ease, comfort. And we want to let that grow, whatever you notice. Still resting with breath and sensation, whole body, cultivating calm, rapture, and this gentle quality of pleasure, pleasantness. As we, as we rest here, we can begin to gently notice the qualities of mind that are arising and passing through this field of awareness. And we also invite these to become calm. as we breathe in and out, sensitive to the whole body. If we notice that we've abandoned the vehicle and gotten out at some landmark, some thought, some storyline, we just notice and we land back into 
feeling already home, being here in the body, sensitive to sensations and breath. And as the mind becomes a little bit calmer, slower, quieter, less combative, less pushing and pulling, we can notice a gladness with that. Very gentle and subtle brightness and gladness with that ease. Sensations arise and pass. Breath arising, passing. Sensations, thoughts, emotions. Just flowing through as we rest with gladness and calm. Gently transitioning from your practice, or you can keep practicing, that's fine. Mm. 
So I hope there's something of service in this practice for us to experience being home and uh, not having to hurry, just feeling like you're already home. <clears throat> and uh, have a sweet rest of your day or evening whenever it is you're practicing with us here on the recording. And please check that link below uh, for um, John's poem. And because um, I think I I missed uh, there was something in this printing that was was askew um, that I will remedy. So thank you for joining us. <laughs>